your thoughts about Snow Leopard's RKFC. Hey guys, hope all is well. It's Fashion Fair from England. Um, I'm enjoying, as you can see, the background, the horrible weather, and I hope you guys are having much better weather in Kashmir. I'm really missing it. Um, thanks to Snow Leopards, I am doing a quick Q&A. Bear with me because it's not a one-on-one -on -one interview, so I'm answering questions that some of the fans have put out, and I'm really excited to be with you today. So, question one from the fans. Please tell us about your time in Kashmir. Honestly speaking, Kashmir has been one of those places that I've always wanted to visit and as soon as I got there I was so excited and it's definitely one of the most fascinating places that I've ever been to. It's amazing, the people are amazing, the fans, the club, the people that work for the club, the community and it was just such a nice feeling and everyone was so humble. So question two, who is my idol? That's a great question. Uh, as many of you probably already know that I'm very vocal about my mother and what she means to me. My inspiration and my role model is my mother. Her struggles from Africa to the UK as a refugee and her fight for equality and what she's done for me and what she's embedded in me, her support and faith in God is definitely what I advocate for and I hope that this story resonates with so many people in Kashmir. Question three, do I have a special routine or superstition before I play? Yes. Um, again, as many of you know, I've been injured most of my career, so the one thing that I've always tried to do before I play in a match is always do my wudu before a match and, and make special prayer and dua um, that God protect me. And usually I actually do a small dua, it's called the Ayat al Kursi, before I play uh, and train, and um, that's always been my superstition before a match, and I'm sure that resonates to a lot of the players as well. Question four Who's better, Cristiano or Leo? Yeah, good question. Um, to be honest, I've always thought from a technical perspective, Leo's probably a little bit better. However, if you think about in, in a game situation, Cristiano has got so many more attributes as it makes him a better athlete overall. And if I were to break it down to say if I had 11 Cristiano Ronaldo's on one team and 11 Lionel Messi's on one team, which would be the better team? Overall, I think 11 Cristiano's would be better on a team because jumping, shooting, scoring, tackling, I think Cristiano, whatever sport he plays, would be just an amazing athlete. And I think the way football is going around the world, it's all about being athletic. And I think for that reason, it would have to be Cristiano. Question six. One football moment you can never forget. One of the most important moments in my career has definitely been playing against Qatar in the Beijing Olympic qualifiers and having my mum there watching me. She, you know, As mentioned earlier, she's been a driving force in my life and as a single mother, she's instilled values that I today both have on and off the field and her coming all the way to support me uh, in, in such a pivotal moment in my life and, and me making my international debut is an amazing um, accomplishment and, I, and I'll never forget her support and being there for me from, from day one. Question seven, who is the most impressive football player you've ever played with or against? Well, I've been quite fortunate to have knocked the ball around with a few icons including Ronaldinho. But most definitely the hardest opponent was Usain Bolt. Yes, that's right, the world's fastest man, sprinter. He's actually an amazing footballer. We played together in a private five-a-side match organised by Puma in London. And also Yannick Balassi was amongst other players that were involved. Yannick obviously being one of the fastest, uh, one of the fastest players in the Premier League with quick feet. Imagine trying to defend against Usain Bolt and Yannick Balassi, both of them playing against you. And we won the match. Question eight, what kind of changes have you seen since you jumped into this NGO and how far do you think soft diplomacy will work? Well, I'm a big believer in soft diplomacy. I think too often governments miss the power of using tools which unite people to be used for good causes. When I speak to government officials, policy makers and other stakeholders that are seeking to make a difference for more just, equal and peaceful world, I always say peace is mattering more now than ever. Peace building approaches, soft diplomacy, dialogue, Engagement are all essential key factors that we need to implement quickly and positively to support the UN Sustainable Development Goals over the next 10 years. And some, sometimes engagement of all levels of society is the hardest part, but we've got the most powerful tool in the world. Imagine football touches 3.5 billion people. And I think unlocking that power is the soft diplomacy tool that can really make a difference. I mean, the experience that I faced and seeing firsthand and coming to Kashmir and what 
football has done for the region is unbelievable. It, in a place where, you know, the global world is now understanding with lockdowns and prohibition of, you know, not being able to do much, etc. And in Kashmir, you know, when we have a when we have a match every every week, the 90 minutes literally with bringing Srinagar to a stop, and we've got fans where we can only have like 15,000. There's 30,000 fans coming to the match. The fact that we've got mums, we've got families, we have the police and the army coming together. That is what the soft diplomacy is all about, and you know, it's it's a role that I think can be played up a lot bigger in building peaceful societies, and we just need to be a bit more open and creative, and great listeners, and only then we can see change. Question nine: Don't you think long ball tactics aren't working for Real at Kashmir FC this season? What are your thoughts on RKFC's possession football? Well, to be honest, I think. Um, our gaffer, Dave Robertson, he's so experienced and he's so versatile. I think he's not only coached in Europe, he's coached in North America, he's coached now in Asia. Um, he's such an international manager and he definitely knows when not to do something and when to do something. I think him coming uh, to Kashmir, obviously we all know and we love him and we believe that what he's done for, for, for the football in the region is amazing. And his tactics, depending on match to match, have to change. And I think... And when he makes that decision, I think we need to see, and we are seeing the amazing effects of what he's doing. Um, I think long ball versus short ball, to be honest, um, I've seen when I was there in Kashmir that a lot of teams were playing uh, tick attack of football, etc. And sometimes that works, sometimes it doesn't work. However, we, as Raul Kashmir, if we have our own strength, and that is long ball, it definitely worked. I think it worked last season as well. Um, but again, the gaffer knows best on how to change it per match and how not to change it and how to interact. But I think the gaffer's um, tactics are definitely working. And I definitely think this is the season that we will be number one and we're going to win a championship home. Question 10. What changes would you like to make in Kashmir football? Um, do you know what? It's not actually change that I want to make in, in Kashmir football. Um, or Kashmir generally, I think is the other way around. I, I, I want to bring Kashmir to the world. Um, Kashmir is known as the most militarized zone in the world and people's perceptions, there's many perceptions about it. But I want, I want people to understand and, and understand Kashmiris, the people, the landscape, unbelievable. And you know, we have a quote in the team at the club where we say that when you see Kashmir through the lens of football, you see the real Kashmir. And that's so true. I've seen a completely different Kashmir to which I've grown up hearing about and I fell in love with the people and everything with it. So I hope inshallah that I can have that contribution. Question 12. What are your thoughts about football talent in Kashmir? Honestly speaking, I think I was actually very pleasantly surprised coming to Kashmir. The youth, um, the reserves, the girls. It's unbelievable. Kashmir is full of talent. And that's another thing. You know, if, if I can help... Um, even expand that talent out, out of Kashmir and I think it's really credit to the chairman. Sandeep Bai has done so much to try and expose that talent and he's a huge believer of the talent in Kashmir and not only a believer, he is that one person who's actually bringing the talent out of Kashmir into the world and, and this is I think is amazing and I think also the fact that you see our youth development and I think that just in the ranks of what Kashmir is doing now through their academy and what we're going to do moving forward and that's what I love about this club they know that it's the next generation and that's what the club is focused on and that's the most important part about football is grow it through the youth. Question 13 what about your injury and road to recovery when will you join the team? Um, well unfortunately as you know um, I've had a very nasty injury I had an Achilles tendon rupture which was 85% torn and usually this injury could be three months all the way to nine months it's very difficult to measure um, as I was going through the rehab I came out to Kashmir to be with the team and unfortunately because of COVID-19 I had to rush back home um, and even in COVID it was difficult to do rehab so therefore, I don't actually know when I'm going to be back. And unfortunately, it's been a year and three months and I still haven't been able to jog. So I'm working with the specialists here, both Real Kashmir and Oxford are still helping me through the rehab process and still supporting me. Um, but unfortunately, at this stage, I don't really know. But the main thing is that I'm working hard day by day and hoping to be able to jog once I've jogged to rebuild strength and then see where it takes me. 
But despite the injuries and setbacks, I am really, really positive to be in Kashmir as soon as possible because last time you saw me, I was on crutches and in a boot and hopefully now, at least I'm there, I'll be there with physically supporting the team. Um, whether I, I can be on the pitch or not, I don't know at this stage. But for me, the number one thing is that my role continues as a player and an ambassador for Real Kashmir and I'll be there with you guys soon. Question 14, your message to the fans. Um, firstly, I just want to say thank you so much. Like from the moment it was announced that I would be joining to the injury to even now, like the interaction has been amazing and it and just makes me so happy even though I can't be there. But you guys are always supporting me and the birthday messages I had from all of you guys as well. You know, thank you so much. I know there was a delay in um, me, me being announced in Kashmir and you had to wait and everyone waited for the media for me to get there. But look, I'm, I'm really excited and I just can't wait to actually meet you all in person. And hopefully I'll be there as soon as COVID-19 allows. Question 15. Was Football for Peace the reason why I joined Royal Kashmir FC? Well, yes and no. I think um, it was definitely a huge factor in me coming over, especially that Football for Peace was launching in India anyway. But I think one of the main factors why I joined IKFC was a mixture between, obviously, the story of the club and what Real Kashmir was trying to do. Um, and also uh, Sandeep Bhai, he's such an amazing person. And him coming over to the UK, and I met him for the first time, such a humble person. When he told me of the story, and what RKFC had done and what they're doing and the vision was, I knew then that if we were to combine our efforts, this could be such an amazing, powerful story. And that's why I'm there. And I hope to come back and we do so much more together. And we haven't even started our journey yet. We've just almost launched it. And hopefully there's a lot more to come. The last question, the most important question. Gosh, there was a lot of questions. Question 16, your thoughts about Snow Leopard's RKFC Honestly speaking, as I mentioned, the fans are the most important thing and this platform and what they're doing to raise awareness for the club, for the fans, for the players, I think it's a great way to interact and thank you so much Snow Leopards for making this happen. You guys really connect here and, and thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak to the fans today and I think hopefully we can have a, a long-term plan of having more of these conversations. So thank you again, it's amazing.